Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us again. Nicholas Catelier from Revit Pure is going to help us here look through an advanced family. Um, Nick, thanks for joining us. And, and um, as the offsite wood plugin is live, we have content teams. You're helping us with some really advanced stuff on timber curtain walls coming up. But today we're going to just do a quick update for our users about something in the pipeline here. A big, almost a super family called Open Web uh, floor trusses in wood. Now, you have some caution about super families. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your stance on families? Because it seems like a pretty hot topic in your social media feed these days. Yes, sure. Well, before jumping into to Reddit to show the, the family, uh, yes, I've been warning people about uh, very heavy families that are uh, poorly made. There's a lot of them on various uh, websites you can find online. Uh, many of these families are made by people who don't really use Revit. So they, they don't really give what an architect or a BIM manager might need in a model. Uh, so with Eli and a, a bunch of other people, including Olivier Pellerin and uh, uh, Laurent Bélanger, we've been building uh, great Revit content. We're all uh, experienced Revit users that have been working in architecture on real projects. So we know what architects need and we have um, we really want to build lean content. It can be a super family. Sometimes you can have multiple options, but still with a, uh, keeping in mind that you still want it to be lean and efficient and not too many parameters. And that what uh, uh, my friend uh, Laurent has accomplished with his family. So switching to Revit here. Um, so these are a bunch of families that have been inserted into a, a container file that I guess uh, the people could request through uh, QWeb. Is that right, Eli? Right, because our plugin is only uh, is only loading the actual 3D model uh, families, but these go right along with that. So uh, a lightweight 3D model showing floor assemblies that then has 2D detailing that can easily teach you about all the different subcomponent options was our goal here. So it is it is a two part thing but download the overall families and then go to the pre-construction service portal and request some more details on this cool structural type now these guys know a lot more about revit than i do but do you do you, do you mind if i want if i can just say some of the key elements of this yeah sure this sort of structural type that is not really well known um Basically, if you are in North America and using out-of-the-box Revit and doing a little bit of wood framing or going to the lumber yard, you're probably seeing eye joists. And engineered eye joists are a nice product. There's many of them. However, the open web version of solid wood trusses and joists is really a fascinating subtype of engineered joist products and floor trusses that has a lot of, a lot of uh, advantages. And one of them is that with those open webs, you can run mechanicals laterally in a great way, predictable way. Um, the other one is that you can put what's called a strong back through them and increase the actual, you can do the load sharing and vibration dampening that makes a really strong tight floor. Um, the other thing about it is that many of our QA manufacturers can make you a custom truss exactly for your span. So. If you come through our portal and ask for some design assist, we're going to put you right with somebody who can make you the exact product that you need. And that has some real advantages in today's tight lumber markets that you're getting exactly what you need pre-engineered. Um, this is not an engineering program, though, so I think we should back up to this just being a, a depiction of open floor trusses within your current Revit workflows. And then let's jump back in with Nick driving, how that how that's gonna work for you. All right, so I'm gonna show first how the detailing families work. So these are uh, detailed components. They're really made, they only appear in a single view. They're not part of the model. So these are made for detailing. And they're separated in different height over here. Uh, this one is a partial section, uh, but this one, which is, uh, Really interesting is that you have uh, arrows that can move around uh, to modify uh, the size of the joist. And as you can see, there's always a full profile of wood here. So the diagonal line isn't broken. 
and you can move it around like this and automatically if there's enough space it will add uh, uh, additional uh, wood elements so these are the the detailed components what what is especially interesting and that was uh, developed by a colleague are these floor assemblies. So these are not detailed components. These are actual floor systems, floor assemblies. And you have only the, the truss or you can add a subfloor and even the sound into an attenuation layer. So if you cut into your floor assembly, this is what you're going to see. But if you go to a 3D view, uh, this is what the floor actually looks like. So it, it doesn't show uh, this section. So the use is really for preliminary reuse or for homes, for example, that would be a perfect case scenario for architects or designers. And it you can see when I select a floor, uh, there is the preview there where you do, you do see uh, the preview of the truss and the joist. But if you look at it in 3D view, uh, it doesn't show it. It shows a, as kind of a, a full volume. Do you mind jumping into the edit type on this? And I'll show you a little more mm -hmm. of, of what we're working in in the background on our data here. Um, I, yeah, I believe that um, if you go back to yeah. the previous screen, you'll see we've, we've added a few um, key attributes here. As you know, we're working on a carbon calculator. We have an <laughs> awesome team for that. One of the things that's really handy for an architect is to be able to draw a preliminary floor assembly and then get a quick carbon footprint um, uh, readout on that. So it's really key for us to understand the spacing, the flange size, whether you're using strongbacks, and then we can use an existing carbon calculation engine to run a really sophisticated prediction of the volume of wood in that floor. It's a pretty cool separate project. We're gonna link these together and we're really gonna show how choosing these floor assemblies, including we believe fiber um, insulation um, for sound can really give you an awesome jump to the overall embodied carbon benefit of your, your structure. So we're laying the groundwork for that, just downloading this and using these gets us started um and thanks for the tour nicholas yeah thanks and yeah just a, a final word the i know that as architects we do like container files like this and it's especially easy you can just copy and paste whatever you need uh, so make sure to uh check out with the qweb team to get this file so thank you bye-bye